Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'd like to feature a new speaker system that I'm offering on my website for the DIY enthusiast. And so this is speaker system 1630. Speaker system 1630 is a small floor standing unit utilizing a four inch full range driver. And it's using two five inch woofers to supplement the bass and mid bass frequencies. So it measures about 20 centimeters wide by 20 centimeters deep, 90 centimeters high, and so it's a small floor stander, floor stander, did I say that right? Yeah. <laughs> and so the idea here is that we are using the woofers to achieve our target frequency response. And so typically if you try to mount um, a driver such as the, the Fostex FE 108NS in a cabinet, you're going to have to add some pretty significant baffle step correction which helps bring down the mids, bring down the highs so that it has a balanced sound character between the bass, mid range and treble. However, when you do that, you're also increasing distortion and you're limiting the maximum output capability of the driver. And so actually I did highlight that in my previous video where I showed two graphs, the first one being the intermodulation distortion um, with a high pass filter and you can see here through the mid-range we have a lower distortion than if we had um, have no high pass filter so if the small little full range driver is being asked to reproduce bass then what we're seeing here is increased noise increased distortion through the mid-range as a result okay so that is something to keep in mind and mainly drives the design rationale for this system so what we're doing here is we're using two high sensitivity woofers with like i mentioned the combined sensitivity of the woofers is 90 db at one watt and then we're simply allowing the full range driver to run without any crossover components, no high pass, but we are padding the full range driver down using a fixed resistor uh, L pad. And we're actually adding about a 10 dB pad to achieve the target frequency response. And so this speaker system is designed for what I refer to as near field listening. And that means that the listening distance is gonna be less than two meters. And the overall listening level from the speaker would typically be around 60 to 70 dB SPL. That's not to say that it won't go loud, but what I've done here is I've, I've tuned the frequency response to achieve a rich full sound at low to moderate listening levels. And so our ears are less sensitive to bass frequencies when we're listening at a low listening SPL. And so as a result, we have to increase the mid bass and bass frequencies accordingly. And so you'll, you'll know that there's the loudness switch on some of the older receivers where if you're listening at a lower level, you can press that switch and it brings up the, uh, the low frequencies to give it a more full sound when you're listening at lower listening levels. And so this is a bit of a niche within a niche in, this, in the audiophile community um, in, in the sense that this will be good for a small bedroom or a den uh, or a B system where you have your main system in a much larger room. And then you want to have a system that's more for late night listening and where the ambient noise is extremely quiet and you want to have a system that still sounds uh, rich and full and is able to retrieve that detail on really well recorded music when you're listening to it you know late at night and you just want to hear way deep into the sound stage and so that's the idea here full range drivers are typically um, the enthusiast recognizes that full range drivers have great coherency great um, uh, I guess coherency is the main aspect and there is a charm to these drivers that allows uh, you to hear really far into the music and so that's what we're trying to do here. I've always been uh, an enthusiast of the, the single dri driver genre and so let's look at the overall construction of this. Now I've tried to maintain simplicity in the construction so I'm just going to hide the uh, side panel here so you can see inside. So what we're doing is we have two chambers and a passive radiator. I'm using the SB Acoustics racetrack passive radiator on the rear and then we're using a support brace. The front baffle is two layers thick. I'm using 12 millimeter thick Baltic birch plywood throughout the construction and so the front uh, baffle would be a total of 24 millimeters thick. I am doing a stepped front baffle and so that's going to help with edge diffraction 
uh, in the lower mid range around one or two kilohertz. Based on my testing, this step uh, really does help a little bit. Now the full range driver has diffraction panels inside the chamber and what this does, it just breaks up any standing waves and um, that, that's going to uh, cause reflections to come through uh, this the paper cone there. And then we have a cease or sorry, a peerless five inch passive radiator as well. And so we've used passive radiators in this design first to make sure that it's compact, that it's easy to build. Um, a lot of times my customers have a hard time finding specific ports, uh, like the specific model of port if you're in a different country. And so these passive radiators are readily available in any country. And in addition to that, the passive radiators actually sound amazing and that they don't bleed through any of the mid-range frequencies from inside the cabinet. And this is often an overlooked design element and speaker design where you do get some uh, reduction in clarity if the port is actually having uh, the mid-range sounds coming through the port opening. And so this eliminates that issue. And so now the flush mounting of the drivers is optional. And so when you buy the plans, um, you'll get detailed assembly and uh, detail drawings for how to construct each piece of the enclosure and I've tried to make it as simple as possible so that even the most amateur woodworker is able to build this speaker. So let's look at the objective test data. So I built the speakers and I did extensive listening tests and uh, what I found was that I really did enjoy having um, great bass extension which in this case the base extension goes down to 40 hertz and that's that's exceptional considering what other alternatives there are out there for for uh, floor standing designs using a full range driver if you were to backload horn this full range driver you would typically only get about 7 or 70 hertz low frequency extension and so we're getting almost a full octave lower base from this design and also you'll note too that I have a really rich full mid bass. And so the idea here is that the high pass on the woofers is a, a first order using a very gentle slope. And so the woofers are also reproducing the mid bass, which is that part of the frequency range from about 80 to 300 Hertz. Okay. So that's the idea here that we're not taxing the small full range driver and it's able to play free of any crossover components and it's also attenuated down in relation to the woofers you can see here that in the upper mid-range we're, we're trying to achieve a nice falling response which subjectively provides a very balanced sound oftentimes full range drivers have criticism in that they sound forward or bright or lean and that's simply due to the fact that if you look at the natural uh, frequency response for this particular driver you can see that it indeed has a pretty aggressive rising response and that's just the nature of the driver it's a very low QTS motor even the Fostex FE 108 E Sigma has an aggressive rising response and so typically um, the designer is left with a decision to make do they apply baffle step do they add uh, a subwoofer well that doesn't address the mid mid base issue where the small full four inch driver is going to have a difficult time reproducing mid base frequencies cleanly and so what we're doing here is we're taking that task away from the full range driver now the full range driver is producing some mid base frequencies but like i said it's attenuated down and so it's not having to reproduce the same level of mid base so we're basically tasking those five inch woofers with reproducing the uh, nearly well, not near but most of the mid bass uh, content in the frequency response so I hope I explained that um, it's a unique design a unique take on trying to get the best of both worlds you want the clarity offered by this Fostex driver but you also want a rich full uh, bottom end in the sound character so looking at the test data we do have some pretty irregular response which is in the driver itself. Now I do have the option of adding the Fostex Super Tweeter and we can talk about that. It's quite difficult to integrate this type of a Super Tweeter with a small four inch driver that 
uses a wizard cone and so what I had to do was order some special components that were very low values so um, I had to use a second order high pass on the Fostex and the inductor was 0.1 millihenry which is quite small the capacitor value was 0.33 and I did a lot of listening on what capacitors sounded the best and I compared the um, I have here the Fostex copper tinned capacitor here 0.33 microfarad and so this one actually sounded the best subjectively compared to the Mundorf Evo oil now the the Mundorfs have been my go-to capacitors they sound great on compression drivers however and with this particular driver I, I do feel uh, that this capacitor the Fostex capacitor works extremely well with their own uh, super tweeter. So the super tweeter is the T96A. It's a new offering from Fostex and it does sound excellent once it's fully integrated. Um, the crossover point is above 10 kilohertz and so you do have to um, so when you buy the plans it includes the passive crossover schematic for the speaker itself as well as the option of adding the super tweeter. Now you don't need the super tweeter but it does add uh, a wider sound stage and you can tell based on the direct comparison between the uh, with and without the the super tweeter you can see that the super tweeter is in fact adding um, much wider directivity in the upper treble and so also I've included in the spec sheet which you can download on my site you can see the effect of the the square baffle and it's improving the uh, upper treble around the eight or nine kilohertz there you can see that uh, that it's a little bit irregular there with the regular baffle but then when you add the square baffle it smooths out things quite nicely and then we do have the option of going with both the square baffle and the Fostex super tweeter which results in the following polar map actually you can see here this is the response of the uh, Fostex super tweeter I've imposed it over there so we're we're very kind of just bringing it in so that you can just barely hear it um, I feel like a lot of mistakes are made when trying to integrate these super tweeters that they have the level just simply too high and also that they're trying to cross it way too low so a lot of care and attention needs to be paid to the uh, overall response of the super tweeter in relation to the rest of the rest of the system um, and also it's imperative that you use objective test data frequency response measurements to actually see what the heck's going on okay so let's look at what happens with the super tweeter when we look at the frequency response 45 degrees off axis so you can see here that the drive the four inch full range driver itself falls out falls off quite significantly in the upper treble and when you add the super tweeter it's balancing out the sound between the mid-range and treble so I feel like the super tweeter is a very uh, worthy add addition um, in the sense that it is going to pr provide that wider sound stage but it's also going to provide a little more transient detail a little more sharpness to the sound which is definitely going to highlight for example the uh, transients that you find on acoustic and electric guitar on snare drums it's just giving that little bit a um, little bit more uh, sharpness there now looking at distortion um, you know from my previous videos that I focus very heavily on distortion and that's what really drives this design and that we want to be able to have plenty of headroom for those dynamic peaks in music and so I've done intermodulation distortion tests uh, for both the bass and in the treble so you can see here for the bass I've started out at 70 dB and I've incrementally increased the SPL until 90 dB and you can see that we still have 50 dB um, noise floor even at 90 dB SPL and so that's 0.33 percent distortion which is an excellent result this test is a really difficult test for any driver you can see the number of test tones that I'm trying to reproduce I think it's a 12 band per octave uh, test tone and so I can't even count the number of tones that it's being asked to reproduce so this is a good test now when we look at the treble distortion we can see that 
we have even lower noise for our 65 dB down. And so the distortion isn't even rising at all as we increase the test SPL. And so this um, really does show that the speaker is able to, able to offer excellent clarity, um, both in the bass and in the treble. So I think uh, you can be rest assured that this, this area has been well taken care of. Um, so if you buy the plans on my site, you'll automatically receive the detail and assembly drawings. And also I'm offering the option of actually buying the drivers, crossover components, and passive radiators in a separate link on my site. If you uh, see here, the overall cost, not including the super tweeter, is $1,035 Canadian for the pair. Now, if you wanted to um, compare that in US dollars, um, the exchange rate currently is 1.26 so actually it's yeah 1.26 so around just over 800 US dollars for the drivers for this speaker kit um, which you can purchase on my site now if you want to upgrade to the Fostex super tweeter the T96A you see here that it's um, 1661 Canadian and which is about just over 1300 US dollars so when you buy this you get all the drivers sorry all the drivers crossover components um, fixed resistors to help you build the kit now I'm not offering a uh, flat pack currently but I feel as though the build is simple enough that you can either commission a local wood shop to build it for you or uh, build it build it yourself okay so um, I offer the published data on my site and uh, my website also shows you know some of what's included and also actually I should touch on this as well the um, the uh, entire speaker can be made a pair of speakers can be made with one sheet of 12 millimeter thick plywood and so in the drawings it will include the nested layout of all the pieces as a as a cut list as you're running it through the table saw and using the material the most in the most efficient method okay well that's it um, another design I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and take care and have a great day